Hello there, welcome back. You are listening to the Photography Made Simple podcast with me, your host, Audrey Ann, where my goal is to help you capture the beauty of your days through photography. Now, as I record this, summer is in full swing, which means that the days are longer and the sun is that little bit harsher. So in this week's episode, we are going to look at some different ways you can approach shooting in full sun. Now, I know that you will have heard time and time and time again that in order to get the best photos, you should try to shoot in the golden hour. In other words, the hour right before sunset or just after sunrise. This is for a very good reason. It is an absolutely fantastic time of day to shoot. With the sun being lower in the sky, the angle of the light is easy to work with. The light itself is softer, so it's more flattering. And because it has that warm glow, it bathes everything in this magical golden light. So if you can swing it, it is absolutely a magical time of day to shoot and I highly recommend it. However, we all know that it's just not always practical. Maybe you've got young kids and they can't stay up that late or you're photographing a wedding that is happening in the early afternoon or you're on holiday and you're sightseeing during the day or you're in business and your client can't make the golden hour. Whatever the reason is, there are going to be times when you're going to have to shoot in full sun. But the good news is there are a couple of ways you can approach it. And this will help you get better people photos, even in the height of summer. But before we dive into those, I do want to quickly let you know about a freebie I have for you called the Mastering Natural Light Starter Guide. If you are new to working with light, it's a great little freebie for you. And you can go and grab it by going to livesnaplove.com forward slash light dash guide. So that's livesnaplove.com forward slash light dash guide. I'll also leave a link to it around where you're listening to this podcast. Okay, let's start by looking at why shooting in full sun is generally considered bad for traditional portraits or people photos. Well, there are really two reasons for this. The first is the angle of the light. So when the sun is high in the sky, the light is coming down onto your subject from above, which leads to shadows in unflattering places. So you'll get shadows in the eyes where the eyebrow and the forehead cast the eye socket into shadow. This is what is commonly referred to as raccoon eyes because instead of the eyes being filled with light as they should be in a portrait, you actually get this circle of darkness all around the eye socket, giving you that look of a raccoon. So the angle of the light leads to these unflattering shadows. The second reason is that if your subject is in the direct sunlight, the light itself is very strong and harsh. So you'll get areas of deep, dark shadows and areas of bright highlights, which again, is just simply unflattering for most people photos. Please don't get me wrong, it can absolutely be fun to work with and we'll get onto that in a moment. But for general images or for most portrait or people photos, it is unflattering. So that is generally why we don't want to use direct sunlight for our people photos. So what do we do instead? Well, the first option is to find a shaded area to place your subject into. Now, this can be open or covered shade. So any area where there is shade where you can place your subject. If the sun is shining, you should be able to find somewhere that has shade regardless of the time of day, including high noon when the sun is more likely to be directly overhead. So this could be many different things, but to give you some suggestions, things like the shade caused by a building or an umbrella or a gazebo or some trees or a fence or pillars or posts or a doorway or some shrubs, absolutely anything that is blocking the light so that there is a shadow on the ground that your subject can step into. That will be considered an area of shade. So you want to place your subject so that they are at the edge of that shaded area looking out 
toward the ambient light. Now, we can get a lot more advanced with our positioning based on whether you're using open shade or covered shade. What else is around you? Any problems you see like up light or dappled light or color casts? That's something that we go into in depth in our Mastering Natural Light course. But to keep things simple for you, for now, just stand them at the edge of that shaded area so that they're looking out onto the light, but not actually in the light. By doing this, you should get incredibly flattering light on your subject because it creates a nice, soft, even light on the face and you'll still get that beautiful catch lights in the eyes as well. So using open or covered shade is a fantastic way to approach shooting in full sun. But what if there is no area of open shade around? then you can still have your subject out in direct sunlight. But the easiest way to approach this is to then have your subject with their back to the sun. This essentially means that they're standing in their own shadow, creating their own open shade. Now, in an ideal world, you'll have something on the other side of them reflecting light back onto them. This can be a store-bought reflector or a natural one, but something is bouncing some light back onto your subject. And again, this will help give you more even light on your subject and avoid the worst of having that bright highlights and the harsh shadows that you typically get in full sun. Now, the final tip I have for you with regards to shooting in sun is actually to embrace that hard light and those hard shadows. So this is a fantastic time to look out for shadows. If you're photographing a person, you'll get their shape on the ground or on the wall behind them, depending on the angle of the light. So look for these shadows and incorporate them into your image or make them the main subject of your image. It definitely adds something that will help make it more interesting. And this actually is a great one. If you're photographing things other than people, have a look to the shadows. If you can incorporate the shadows there in the image, you will have a very interesting image. So it's great to look out for that. And I love to do that when there is full sh- full sun. I will always incorporate one where we can also see the shadow as well. So there you have it. That is three different ways of dealing with shooting in full sun. Now, if you are interested in learning more about working with natural light, then I have two resources for you. The first is that free Mastering Natural Light Starter Guide that I mentioned earlier in the podcast. But if you really want to get to grips with photographing in all kinds of light, from sunny days to overcast days to low light, using backlight to front light and side light and rim light and going indoors and outdoors and using additive light and subtractive light and get all those little tweaks and positioning that make an incredible amount of difference, then do also check out my Mastering Natural Light course. You can find out more about this by going to livesnaplove.com forward slash light. That is livesnaplove.com forward slash light. So I will leave a link to the free guide, the course and some other relevant articles on light for you in the show notes for this episode. So be sure to check around where you're listening to this podcast for even more resources. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope it has given you some ideas for photographing in full sun this summer. Please, please, please don't forget to subscribe. It makes my day when we get more subscribers and you'll also get notified when we have a new podcast episode released so you won't miss anything that is coming up. And we have some fantastic episodes lined up for you along with some guest episodes that I think you're going to love. So thank you so much for being here and I will see you again same time, same place next week. Until then, have a great time photographing and I will see you then. Bye bye.